Therapy through play. These children have been asked to pick up something green if they feel happy and a stone if they feel sad. <laughs> the humanitarian organisation MSF is running a therapy class to help children deal with their emotions. We're asked not to film their faces. <laughs> خوشحالی و ناراحتی صحبت می‌کردیم امروز گفتیم که بشین حس کن چه حسی دارم چی هست All of these children are from Afghanistan Many have been living in Iran before their parents decided to take them to Europe After crossing the sea from Turkey they found themselves on the Greek island of Lesbos برام بگو عزیزم چیه که یه ذره چهار ماس اینجا این خسته شدی دیگه ها آره این یه ذره ناراحت frequent bedwetting nightmares angry behavior and refusal to talk are common problems and msf says it's increasingly seeing children and teenagers who have self harmed or attempted suicide look there is no rest if you have already, if you come from a country of conflict, if you have a journey and now are here in a place where it's cold, there was no electricity last week, where it's raining, where there is no privacy, where you have to share a tent with another family that you don't know, if there's constant noise, constant light, const there is no rest for these kids. The children live opposite the clinic in Moria camp, a facility run by the Greek government for migrants and refugees. This Syrian woman and her daughter also live in the camp. We'll call her Amal, but that's not her real name. She asked us to conceal her identity. <laughs> Amal arrived with her daughters and her husband three months ago. <laughs> They're hoping to be transferred to better accommodation. But for now, they're stuck in Moria. We wanted to see what's going on behind the camp's walls. We have authorization to enter for 45 minutes. First, we're taken to the section reserved for single women. The camp manager is an army general who came out of retirement two years ago to run Moria. Κάνουμε ό,τι καλύτερο μπορούμε. Όμως έχουμε καθημερινές πάρα πολλές αφήξεις. Έχουμε πάρα πολύ κόσμο. Αυτό και διαφορετικούς διαφορετικές εθνικότητες που έχουν διαφορές μεταξύ τους που εδώ είναι μια δύσκολη κατάσταση. Αυτό θα πρέπει να ξέρουν όλοι. Δεν μπορεί να είναι αρνητική. Δεν είμαστε βασανιστές εδώ πέρα. We're given a guide who takes us to the area where unaccompanied minors live. A 17-year-old from Afghanistan tells us at night he doesn't feel safe. What happens at night? Everybody is drinking and coming inside. So if somebody is drinking, so he's not by his own self. He will do whatever he wants, so you cannot control him. Two days before our visit, a 15-year-old migrant got drunk and set fire to part of the camp. No one was injured. We're told the visit is over. We're not allowed to see the rest of the camp, where the majority of migrants live. Because 
They allow us an extra 10 minutes. The migrants spend their days waiting. Sometimes tensions boil over. Two Afghan women are in a fight over who was first in line to see the doctor. We're told it's time to stop filming and leave. But an Afghan man approaches us, keen to show us where he lives. Our guide refuses. You're, you're just delaying the process, I know. Please, time is out. We leave our guide behind to see where the Afghan and his family live. Here, house. My wife, my one baby, seven family here. It's a damp, overcrowded and cold shipping container. When our guide catches up with us, we're escorted out of the camp. The 5,000 migrants living in Moria didn't plan to end up there. They had all planned to move off Lesbos quickly onto mainland Greece and other European countries. But they're stuck waiting while their asylum applications are processed. Outside the camp, we meet Mahmoud from Iraq. We need to see more of the camp. Mahmoud offers to show us inside. Dressed in disguise, we slip through a hole in the fence. Mahmoud has been in Moria for six months already. But he'll have to wait until the 24th of June 2020 for his asylum interview. <laughs> Hope is what encouraged the residents of Moria to leave their home countries and make dangerous journeys to the European Union. But as they wait, that hope is disappearing. Away from the camp, in a safe, private place, we meet up with Amal and her husband. He was jailed after joining a protest against Bashar al-Assad in the early days of the Syrian conflict. Amal and her daughters were living in Raqqa, which fell under the grasp of the Islamic State group and became its de facto capital. When he was released, the family reunited and left Syria immediately. 
هلا طلعت من اجيت على تركيا من تركيا على اليونان والوضع هنا سيء جدا واتمنى حلمي اني اطلع كلاجع على فرنسا مشان اتعالج مشان اعالج بنتي Hello, welcome. Amal and her husband have got a meeting with a psychologist. They want one of their daughters to get treatment. Please, let's come inside after. Eh? Yeah. All right. So, how are you today? Ah, it isn't Tuesday. The seven-year-old has refused to talk for nearly two years. She was traumatized by the bombings during the battle for Raqqa. You see, like, how they play, but she doesn't play. She said, Okay. But don't worry, although there is a waiting list, as you say that there is an arranged appointment on Tuesday, so give us some time. Huh? Okay. The father has also joined a waiting list for psychological treatment. But they wonder, how can their mental health ever improve while they're living in Moria camp? They escaped a war zone, made a dangerous journey across land and sea. Now they're in Lesbos, and like thousands of others, they've almost run out of hope. <laughs> 